this example that you're seeing here actually starts off with something very simple and uh, I'm going to work on this uh, one page app using uh, React. So what's happening is I'm going to go to my local um, local server and then set up a page. But what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to make that uh, using my terminal. So I'll just blow this out so that you're able to see. So I'm going to make a directory that I'll call static or you can call it whatever you, you wish to call it, maybe stating. And then what I'm going to do next is that I'm going to npx create react app, which is uh, one way of not installing a create react app on my local computer, but I can always call it uh, from uh, the npm uh, root. So when I start running this out, of course it's going to install what is needed, it's going to install a a package, the JSON file, uh, right in here. Then at the end of the day, it's going to start installing all the npm uh, files that are needed to run this. So you've seen the JSON the package file; it's already installed. All right. So um, if we look in our terminal, we'll see that uh, everything installed correctly and our package.json are uh, built in a couple of uh, extra scripts. Uh, it built in whatever is needed to help us start. So we have React, React DOM and React scripts already included as dependencies. So I think we are ready to go. Um, so I'll just uh, open up uh, our, our our folder, our local folder of stating in our in our editor, just to see what is actually going to happen. And then next I'll be able to run the the, the program on our, our local server. So open this up in our local editor. We'll see in our source folder we just have a few CSS files, JavaScript, some tests, and then a, a couple of things. And then if I run this, I'll just have to cd into uh, change directory into stating. And then uh, I'm going to just uh, npm start to allow us to run our, our React we see right here now is um, the initial template that we get from our React, React app and it's just going to be an empty an empty file, an empty <laughs> page but it's going to just have a, an icon of a React just running here. If we quickly scan through what's going on here is if we go to our index.js this is the file that starts all the work because if we look at our packet JSON, we see that uh, everything is uh, oh, it's not here. So our starter file is uh, the index.js for the React file, and what's happening is that it's importing React, React DOM, importing the CSS, importing our app file, which is app.js, and then installing a service worker to help us with our a couple of things that is making uh, our website um, better in terms of uh, caching and then with React DOM we, we're getting a virtual DOM from React and then it's going to render uh, our app uh, by linking to the element uh, with an ID of root. So if we quickly go into the exposed file of uh, the public HTML we have index.html and it's the one that is running all this information uh, at the back end. So what I'm going to do is if I change this title and call it a uh, first app and save right here. If we go back to our our app, you're going to see here in the particular bar that we have here in the address bar, we have first app showing up. And that's how we know that uh, all this is actually editable. The HTML can be added on too. But in most, uh, in most importantly, we are going to start working on what is in our app here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this paragraph, remove the links, and then I'm also going to remove um, the header and the image. And then if I save this, we're going to realize that um, our React app is uh, auto-loading. So we have something that is blank. So we're actually able to write some anything that we want, so we can add an h1, h1 tag, and then uh, 
can add an h2 tag and just call this uh, my first phone I could type my first uh, react app if we go back and look we'll have of course my first app coming up right in our browser so the next thing that we are going to do is that we're going to start working with a, a couple of technologies we're going to work with a GraphQL we're also going to look at uh, having our back end running on WordPress uh, WordPress is such an easy tool to use that anyone who has access to let's say a particular WordPress uh, install is able to add posts that can be put up so you don't have to monitor how that is being put up you know there's security involved and you're just having your information coming on your old uh, HTML site let's say maybe your client doesn't want to change what they have they just want to have more dynamic information coming on and you actually don't want to go through the hassle of making a theme again so you can just run this and uh, you'll be able to have stuff coming up and working as it should be so keep watching if you like this video uh, please give it a thumbs up and if you like uh, the channel and what is going on please subscribe and watch out for the next videos that will be coming through have a good day.